fail to push because the current tip is behind. Really? How is it behind? Oh, now I have another error. <laughs> Okay, so thank you for everybody who watched my previous video uh, where I walk through my GitHub workflows um, YAML pipelines for a particular repository. Um, I thought I'd make a quick video to answer a question from the comments from a DevOps guy. He writes, I struggle to understand your promoting technique. Wouldn't the Git shot be different for the trigger you have for dev and staging? Um, so I'm gonna take a few minutes to answer the question and I'll show you as well a little bit in the code. So first off, um, the trigger's the same. In each case, the trigger, trigger is going to be actually a push uh, to the repository, to github.com. They will just be on two different branches. So I'm going to assume the question is around kind of, wait, what? The Git shot is the same for both dev and for staging branches. Um, what I'm going to explain is that in my case, yes. Uh, what I'm going to do to help you understand why that is and why it could be different is we're going to look at the difference between a uh, fast forwarding your branches as opposed to creating a merge commit. So I edited this video after a few weeks holiday and is not a beginner's video. I gave you a beginner's answer in the comments, but when you bring together DevOps, Git, like real pipelines and Kubernetes, fun stuff happens. Um, but I do fix all the errors that pop up. I use all the Git commands listed here, including revert, reset, force pushes, etc. So if you watch the whole video, it will make sense. Okay, so this is the GitHub repository uh, that I used for the walkthrough with the YAML pipelines for GitHub actions or GitHub workflows. If we look at branches, whoops, there's my mouse. You'll see that I have two branches that are protected. One is called main, which actually corresponds to my development environment. And the other one is called staging. Now, coincidentally, as I look at this, uh, main was updated three weeks ago, so that's my dev environment, and the staging environment was updated four months ago. So before we look at any code or Git shaws, let's look actually at the difference between what's running on staging and what's running um, on the development environment. So I have here open the development uh, environment, which you can tell by the uh, host name. And in another tab, I have open staging. And you can see that actually staging is uh, very old. It's uh, me trying to figure out how do I want to actually display all of these? And I don't have as much placeholder content, right? If I think it was like four months versus three weeks ago. So there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, so, when I look at this page, right, you can see that I played with more stuff and there's also going to be more content. Now there's two options that I can do. So this kind of works entirely, right? I could theoretically just bring all of that over into staging. And actually if I open it up here, oh, I'm running the environment. I don't need dev. Okay, let's make this also a little bit bigger. Uh, okay, I have shortcuts, but you can look them up in my .files repository. As you can see, this is from three weeks ago, March 20th, right? And uh, this matches what you see in github.com where I was adding the heading. You can see here that I have a feature IA for information architecture branch, and I was just playing with lots of random things. Uh, you can see that it's also sloppy. I have here <laughs> merging from um, Dependabot. So it's actually quite, quite messy. Uh, and at some point, if we come all the way down here, we see we have staging. Now, if you work on a release schedule, right? And you see some of this is also super, super messy. What you might wanna do is bring them all as like a package over into staging. Now that's not how I normally work, but I'm going to do that to show you what it would look like. Although I think if I did that, yeah, if I did that and I pushed, uh, my pipelines would fail. So let's do that anyway, so you can see them fail. To understand why this will fail if I do a merge commit, 
let's very briefly look uh, inside the Azure Portal UI for Azure Container Registry so you can see the tagging system and how it works. Now, this is actually for the old version of this repository before I decided to make it generic and not uh, Kubernetes specific. Uh, what you can see, um, and I'm wondering if I used this for a previous video, but if you look at the Git SHA here, 225A, a, <laughs> you can see that um, they all have the same digest as well. It goes super, super long. And even though the dates are a little bit different, it's the same, the contents in the image. And that is because the pipeline takes the Git SHA and uses that to say, okay, it's this version of code I want to prom um, promote. Now that means you can only do a fast forward. So what I'm going to demonstrate right now is I'm going to do a merge commit and take that giant list of commits. Um, it's going to create a different Git SHA and then we'll watch the pipelines fail. So now we're back in Git or in my terminal. So if we go to staging, now I am on the staging branch. So this commit exists, AF2F. So let's do, um, let's see. If I do normally git merge main, what it will do is a fast forward, right? If they kind of share a history and git can automatically do that. So if I do that, it will just fast forward everything and I didn't need to make a commit and it just kind of worked. Um, that's not what I want to do because if I do this, um, this exists and it will work to, for the purpose of this demo, I want to show it to breaking. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to reset it and I'm going to set it to the version that I have on GitHub. And you can do that by just, you know, giving it the name of the remote, which in this case is called origin and the branch on the remote, which is called staging. So that way, super easy. I backtrack to my AF2F. What I can do instead is git merge no fast forward uh, main. And so you can see what it's doing is it's taking all these commits. There's a lot of them, uh, 66. And you can see actually it only goes up to line 25. So it's only showing like 20-ish of them. So it says merge branch main into staging. So what I'm gonna do is actually put in a specific message and say purposely break, not brain. Wow, I can't spell, uh, I need more coffee. Purposely break the pipelines with a commit SHA that does not exist. Um, well, the commit SHA exists. That does not correlate to an existing dev image in the container registry. So I'm a huge fan, if you've seen what I do, is of being um, sort of explicit and intentional. So I'm gonna delete this anyway, but good practices. So that is my commit. I'm going to exit out of this and it's going to fast forward that. Now, the nice thing about this is that you see this is where main was. But you also see this like, wait, what? You're going to purposely break this. Yes, I'm going to purposely break this. So what I'm going to do now is push and I also log in via my um, key. And the, this branch must not contain merge commits. <laughs> ah, but it says I also bypass the rule violation uh, because I'm an admin. So you can see, I really don't like these merge commits, but let's see if this actually worked, even though I, it should have, I should trust the, the messages that I just saw on the terminal. Oh, this did not work. That's good. Why did it not work? Invalid, unchange, invalid value. Oh, okay. Let me just see why this didn't work. I have a guess. Uh, yes. <laughs> 
So I have another random issue here that we have to be um, aware of. And actually, I'm just going to open this up in Visual Studio Code to explain why that failed. Okay. So there is something here and I noted it. So here we go. So uh, it fails if it's only numbers because of the spec. And so this is one of those things where you just have to like uh, struggle through it and then you know this will happen. So I did document everything. Uh, I just didn't remember where, but it was documented somewhere. So if you look at this, you will see the commit is 9018387, which is just uh, numbers. So when you convert it uh, into a string, I guess, it doesn't come out as a string uh, because there's only numbers and this will break. So what we're going to do is try to get a letter in there um, to make this work. And uh, you want to update something. No, not now. Um, let's go back here. So what I'm going to do is actually just amend the commit. And so I can do amend like this and it'll just break something here. Try to get a string. And let's see if we get something with uh, letters. Yes, now we have an A, we have two A's. So now we have a string in there. So I'm going to push again. Fail to push because the current tip is behind. Really? How is it behind? Oh, now I have another error. <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay, so the reason why it's behind is because I already pushed something else and I changed the commit. I could have made an empty commit on top, right? But instead I changed it. So, because I'm trying to show you how this will break, I'm gonna bypass all the controls I put in there and I am just going to force push. So let's have it go through. There we go. Luckily I'm an admin running in God mode because this is just me. So, why is it not running? I guess it doesn't run for force push. Uh, then let's do this. I can't spell. This also has some letters in it. D E E F. Let's push this. Um, if I'm really unlucky, GitHub will not build empty commits. And I bet you that's what's happening now. It's not running anything. Okay. I wonder if I should just like redo this. <laughs> oh, okay, bar. And actually let's make this uh, foo.txt. Um, Add a silly file to trigger a pipeline run. Let's hope I didn't totally break this. There we go. All right, let's just let this run a little bit. If you got lost in this video, I'm really sorry. I thought it was going to be a super easy explanation, uh, but I guess even when I tried to break things, yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's just uh, give this some time. Okay. Debug outputs. That's taking minutes. Why is that taking minutes? And promote to staging failed. Nice. See, it's not found. The pipeline will fail. So kubectl apply will just work, right? Um, when you're running it, giving the command to the control plane, to the Kubernetes control plane, hey, you know, update this. And it's like, okay. Um, it's not until the nodes actually try to pull an image from the registry that they realize it doesn't exist. 
And if I actually log into it, right? So this would be the staging cluster. Uh, let's see. Uh, get credentials, this one. Yes, it's me. Okay, fine, I can close that. And now you can see that actually, uh, okay, this is something else that's crashing. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, let's open up K9s. This is why you should actually update your stuff regularly uh, because a lot of things are just going to break. Um, the reason why these will have stuff that's not working uh, is because the, uh, the SKUs of the VMs for this cluster, they're too small and you can see all this like Azure stuff running on it. Um, so it's, yeah, it's going to fail for that reason. Let's look at this. Um, okay, it's a little bit easier if I do this. Come on. Okay. So you can see here, it's trying to find an image and it doesn't exist. And it doesn't exist because um, it can't find the dev version to pull down, right? And it's pulling down based on the tag so it can push up a new one. Now let's go back and fix this and do this properly. Um, I've now actually moved the branch way too much. Um, so I can't really properly fix it. Um, I added this sort of silly file. I did the empty commit and then this was the merge commit. So now to go backward, right? Backward, really sorry if this is hard to follow. I want to get back to this commit before I made these two to trigger the pipeline. So, um, and I want to do that to show you why you would use merge commits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset uh, hard and I'm going to go from the tip of the branch, which is head, I'm going to go back two. And so now I have this, now I have to purposely break the pipelines. Now, if you look at this, right, here's main, here's all this stuff. And here was my staging. I no longer have the origin staging that I can look for because I fast forwarded it on github.com. So going back again to see what this looks like, this is a merge commit, right? If we look at it, you can see all these different commits that it has and it doesn't even list all 66. So let's quit that. Let's say you do a release and it has those 66 commits or even just 10 and you're like, oh shit, it doesn't work. How do you go backward? If you are confident that your last sort of release is working, um, if you do each release as a merge commit, right, which some people do do, uh, then you could just roll that back or revert that. So I could do revert this uh, is a merge, but no M option was given. Let's try this again. Whoops. So greater than zero, one. Okay. It does look like it undoes this uh, this com commit and it makes a new one. So, so it reverts this one and it goes back to this one, AF2F, which I think, if I think backward, that was the last one that I had. This is uh, reviews. Yes, AF2F, that's the last one that I had. So the whole parent thing, that's new. I have to look at look that up and see what it means. Uh, but I've definitely worked at organizations before where people did that. So you want to make one giant merge commit um, and then you have the ability to basically go backward a lot. Um, the thing to be aware of is that you can't go backward and forward. I have to go move my car but I'll do that a little bit later. So you can't like undo and then undo again and stuff like that. It can get really messy. 
Uh, trust me, I've tried that before in the past. Don't remember why, uh, but that's why it's really important to understand how all of this works. As you can see, I find this with the whole merge commits for me personally, hard to deal with, but that's because I'm used to a very particular workflow. Um, it doesn't mean mine is better. It's just what I'm used to. And whatever you do day in, day out, that's always going to work better for you. My recommendation is always do what works for you, right? Stability and developer happiness are the most important thing. If you find that you can use merge commits and you get the best results that way, like in terms of stable deployments that you know what happens, then go for it, do it that way. You don't have to do it my way, so to speak. So let's see, let's go back and now actually make it work. And this is even more complicated, but let's uh, get it done. Okay, going backward is also going to be a little bit confusing, but let's do that anyway. Um, the thing is my Git history is completely like whack now, right? Um, staging no longer exists nicely from the main branch. So I can get back to it though, because I know when the last good, not good commit, but when the last one was, this is the one that I want. Um, changes made to that one. Uh, what I'm gonna do is a little bit wacky, but whatever. I am going to create a new branch, uh, staging backup, and I'm going to create it off that previous commit. Now, the reason why I'm making a new branch called staging backup is because my current staging branch is completely borked. So what I'm going to do now as well is I'm going to delete staging. Um, it might give me a warning um, now because I'm using lowercase d. Yep, so I'm going to actually properly delete it. And now what I can do is I am at my staging backup, so I should be at that AF2F, just double check. Yep, I am there. And I am now going to actually uh, create another branch, or actually I could do, I think, rename. So I could just do this instead of creating a new branch and then deleting this. I should be able just to do this and just rename them. Yay, I have that. So um, this, if I push this, do another force push. Uh, okay, it lost the upstream because I deleted uh, it before, deleted the staging branch. The upstream is just if you have various sort of remotes. So um, if you're used to using Heroku, for example, you could do git push origin main or git push Heroku main. Um, so the git knows, okay, where do you want to push? Uh, let's just do this set upstream origin staging. I have to redo it because I killed the branch. It's going to fail, that's right. Now I'm going to hit uh, that just to get it working again. I think at the beginning when I started recording, it was like that commit was four months old. So let's go double check. Staging, yes, four months old. We're back to that. And any pipelines run? No, it didn't run. I'm wondering why though. I'm wondering if it's because of the force push. I would expect it to still run. Oh, well, uh, not my goal for today. So what I'm gonna do instead is just to be sure, let's go back to main. Oh, okay, main, my dash doesn't work because I've been going back and forth all the time. So now we have this one, 685, this should exist. This exists, dev. So in the pipeline, when it pulls it down, and I think if we look at Docker promote, so you can see it's going to try to pull this down, retag it, all right, and then push it back up. It will be able to find it. So uh, now let's go back to staging and let's actually just uh, merge the main branch. And you can see it just, whoop, it just pulled in all those 66 commits. Um, and if we go back uh, here, we can see this is where it was four months ago. 
AF2F. So this is how I normally work. I just take all of it and then I do um, push. So. Yes, and so now it's running and it's going to run for the staging branch. So let's give it a few minutes. So you can see that it actually does the kubectl apply. <clears throat> so what it's waiting is actually for the image. So if we go back, this is actually kind of nice. We should be able to see it just suddenly work again. Um, and it, is, it does have an image pull error. Let's look at the namespace. Whoops. Namespace. Let's look at this one. Where are my pods? Uh, I haven't done this enough. Come on. There we go. And you can see now it's terminating the old ones, right? And then the new ones will all come back online. So this one is still 67 days old. This one is 67 days old. This one's brand new, um, 90 seconds. This one's coming up online and one at a time. So there's one more that's 67 days old. And as soon as this one's up and running and ready, then it'll kill the last one. Now it worked. So if we go back to GitHub, when this is triggered, and if you remember from the previous video, it does like a little bit of a sleep. It waits for all the other steps to finish, and then it's going to check. So we're staging. So before we had the old one, our famous AF2F that I borked a lot. And now if we do a refresh, it should be, yes, this one, 68.54. And it should be the same one on dev. 68.54, there we go. So this was supposed to be really quick and I wanted to explain something very simple, but maybe you'll enjoy watching me actually just goof off and get, it's not really goof off, but even when you try to fake something to show something like relatively simple, then you realize, okay, Git is not that simple. I'm so sorry, but hopefully you learned something out of it. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna be traveling again for a bit. Uh, volunteering with my old high school for the next couple of weeks. Uh, so yeah, no uh, videos, but definitely the email newsletter will launch by May. And uh, yeah, see you again soon. Bye.